to a team that has much, much more fantasy value than the Baltimore Ravens this year, just like we all predicted. It's the Miami Dolphins. They are hot right now with Tua Tagovailoa at the quarterback spot. What do you think about Tua and these Dolphins weapons moving forward? I think there's some some interesting appeal, especially as we get into, you know, the deeper names, deeper into the season where you got more guys hurt, COVID comes up, guys go on IR, like David Johnson seemingly out of nowhere. And then it's, oh, you got to pick up Savan Ahmed, like just these crazy things that can happen. But Tua still, like he's been good, but just the volume, the volume has been the killer. This game kind of fell flat after some of the, the rookie hype. We thought it was going to be this crazy shootout with, you know, 35 plus pass attempts from both sides with Tua and Herbert against the Chargers in week 10, but didn't pan out that way. Tua only had to throw the ball 25 times, completed 15 of his throws for 169 yards and two touchdowns, 14.7 fantasy points. Didn't kill you, but wasn't the smash play that we all expected. You know, I was on Twitter just saying, hey, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you can start Tua this week. <laughs> uh, you know, again, it didn't kill you, but definitely wasn't the smash play we all expected. I still think the upside is there on the right game script. I just don't know how much of that game script we're going to see. Tua is still a stash. If you have room on your roster for another quarterback, you can try to sell them high if you already have a good startable quarterback. And, and that position is just so streamable. I don't think you need to hold two of them on, on most yeah. rosters. Do you like Tua against Denver in week 11? I'm, I'm kind of fading just because I don't think the game script is going to ask Tua to do much, just like we've seen so far to start his career. Yeah, to your point, Steph, if you have, I actually think he's fine. I think he's a fine streamer this week. If, if you want to roll the dice and gamble a little bit, I think the variance for Tua is a little bit higher just because we haven't seen him as much. The Dolphins defense has been absolutely fantastic. So he hasn't had to quite do as much. They've been in these positive game scripts where they're leading that game a couple of weeks ago against the Cardinals. We saw him lead a couple of really awesome drives when he needed to. But you're right. If you're not starting to a like this week or he's not your streamer that you're locked in on there, I don't think there's a need to hold him on your bench right now. Um, obviously, if you know you have room for him and, and there's you're fine and you have an IR spot for any of your hurt players, like it's fine because if he does have one of these breakout weeks, kind of like Herbert, it took him a couple weeks to really break out from a fantasy football perspective. So if that's the case with Tua, I'm fine to leave him on your bench. I mean, he's got the the Broncos this week, then the Jets, then the Bengals, then the Chiefs and the Patriots, then the Raiders. So decent schedule here down the stretch for Tua if he does break out. But I'm also fine to drop him. I mean, we look at guys like Jameis Winston, who over the next three weeks has Atlanta, Denver, Atlanta. Like I, I think Jameis Winston is just as viable as an option right now as Tua Tagovailoa. Now watch Tua is going to go off this week, and I'm going to sound like an idiot even saying that. But on paper right now, from what we've seen, I think. Um, you're fine to, to drop two if you need to, but he's also a good streamer. He's just in that same category as, you know, the QB 12 through 20 always are in a good matchup. You can pick him up off the waiver wire and throw him in your lineup. Um, but Steph, what do you think about these pass catchers in Miami? Devontae Parker has been a little bit disappointing. Um, Preston Williams is now on IR and Jakeem Grant is looking a little bit interesting in this offense. Mike Gusecki has been disappointing as well. Out of these Dolphins pass catchers, you know, Jakeem Grant, Devontae Parker, Mike Gusecki, what are we doing? Do you need to start any of them, or should they be left on your bench or even on the waiver wire? Yeah, I think you still got to start Parker. Really what the the issue is with all these guys, and I love Jakeem Grant. I'll talk about him in a second. I think he has tremendous upside now as the kind of de facto number two with Preston Williams on IR. But for Devontae Parker and all the other guys, you get capped by just the volume. You know, the things that we see with Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow is that they're throwing the ball 30 plus times a game. Herbert's been this deep threat gunslinger passer. And the Dolphins defense has really put the offense in position where they don't have to push the ball downfield more than they necessarily want to. The Dolphins defense has a takeaway in 15 straight games. It's the longest active streak in the NFL. They're top five in points allowed. And it's great to see Tua kind of slowly develop. Like, he, they don't ha have to ask him to do a whole lot right now. He even said in an interview, I thought this was pretty funny, Tua said the NFL isn't as hard as I thought it would be. Uh, I, I think he's going to be fun for fantasy sooner or later, uh, but not right now. With all that being said, though, 
Parker, you got him as a low-end wide receiver too. Flex name type guy. It's probably where you draft him, him anyways. So I think all remains constant with him. He's coming off some tough matchups. Again, the volume hurts, but you still got to plug him in for what he can do in this offense. You think of, um, you know, Tua's first touchdown in the league was a slant to Devontae Parker in the end zone. I think we're going to see that many, many more times throughout their careers. Jakeem Grant is a guy that I love. He's this twitchy, really small you know, kind of like a punt returner, kick returner type guy that you typically see. And that's what he does in this offense. And he's coming off a pretty good game. Four receptions for 43 yards and a touchdown last week on 75% of snaps. I think he is a deep league flex play, a guy you can have stashed if if you're in a tough situation with bye weeks, with COVID, whatever it might be. I think you can plug Jakeem Grant in there with some sort of confidence. And I think we saw what his floor is last week if you take away the touchdown right the touchdown is the upside where he gets you to that 14 point 16 point fantasy type outing and the four for 40 is probably going to be his floor which is eight fantasy points so yeah i think you can do a lot worse if you're in a desperation situation he's also pretty sneaky if uh you're you're in a league with some weird rules where you get points for return yards and and kickoff yards for those who don't know, uh, Alex, I'm not sure if you know this. Our home league actually does reward. Oh, I know. Point. Okay, glad that you know that. Then I thought I was sneaky, and the only one who knew. I pick up Jakeem Grant. And I'm like, oh, get a little, uh, you know, extra points in here. Uh, his, his points get a little inflated by some of the special teams usage, but nonetheless, you know, he's a guy that you can plug in if you're desperate. A stash if you want to add some depth to your roster on a playoff run. And then Savan Ahmed coming out of nowhere. <laughs> Nobody even knew who this guy was. Two weeks ago, he's come in. He's taken over that Miles Gaskin role. Are you plugging him right back in after a pretty solid outing in Week 10? Heck yeah. I'm totally willing to plug him in. Now, I know Matt Breida could be back this week, but to me, it looks like this Dolphins team wants to use one running back. We saw it with Miles Gaskin. They kind of had this weird committee at the start of the year, and once Gaskin showed what he could do, they just gave it all to Gaskin. And Ahmed comes into this game – you know, Breed is out. They decide to cut Jordan Howard or wave Jordan Howard. Laird got a little bit of passing game work, but this was like Savan Ahmed's backfield. 75% of snaps, 22 touches against the Chargers. As long as Gaskin is out, I think Ahmed is a streamer. And I, I want to give myself a little plug here. I don't do it often, but in our Dynasty League, Steph, I have had to stream the running back position for the last four <laughs> weeks because of injuries to Mixon, Eckler, and Kenyon Drake. In Dynasty. <laughs> you know, this is 20 bench spot, 12 team deep league. So the waivers are pretty much nothing. And I've had to pick up guys, not even in the waiver cycle, like on Saturday afternoon, plugged in Carlos Hyde, DJ Dallas, Tyler Irvin for the Packers in the game Aaron Jones was out, and now Savan Ahmed. And I think the lowest points I got was like 11 out of any of those guys. So patting myself on the back for that nice. one. But I'm nice. probably going to be starting Ahmed again this week if Joe Mixon is out again. And I actually am not too upset about it because he looked really good in that game. And if he's going to get 22 touches, if he even gets 15 touches, you could do a lot worse at the running back position. So to me, this Dolphins team – there's no studs from a fantasy football perspective, but there's a lot of value just like floating around. And Tua as a streaming quarterback or deep lead, deep league receiver options, or even, you know, Savan Ahmed as someone you can plug in at the running back position to help fill in for some bye weeks. So the Dolphins are getting very, very interesting. And if you have defenses and kickers, I think their kicker is the number one kicker in the league right now, but you should not have kickers in your fantasy league. Let me <laughs> say that. And their defense has looked pretty good as well. Yeah, Jason Sanders balling out. What a guy. 